Hey, Trueflation Nation, back again. I'm sorry it's been a quiet two weeks. Why? I've been on the road. I was in Singapore at the Milken Summit or Milken Institute Summit. I was at Token 2049 and then flew across to New York to go to the UNGA, the climate event, event and then RWA Summit and then Masari. So a number of different events uh, filling up my two weeks with jam-packed agendas back to back. Uh, all in the cause of promoting Trueflation uh, and increasing the awareness for the work that the team is doing. Um, today, inflation's at 2.51% flat. It's been pretty flat for a long time. And it was really interesting. I actually got to meet uh, with Balaji, uh, one of our investors and a big supporter who was to a certain extent criticizing uh, what we were doing at, at Trueflation. He didn't believe the numbers. But actually what really came across in that conversation was the numbers are accurate as we calculate them. And what is very clear is that we're not presenting what has been happening over the last three years. If you think about it, your purchasing power has declined by 25% on average across all of the items that you purchase in total. And that's 23%, not 2.51%. So people log on, they see a declining inflation number and it's only 2.5%. That's only because we show to you the one year history. I wanna see the three year history. So the team is working on building out that three year visualization as terms of what in aggregate has your purchasing power lost in terms of looking at the last three years. How do we present that? What does that look like? And so you could also go to our calculator and calculate what this really means to you over the last year. We unfortunately only do this. So if you go to solutions, you go to inflation calculator, it loads the calculator, and then you can put in all your details here to calculate how much you've actually lost in purchasing power. I would have to sign in, it stored my details. Um, and what we're trying to do is work on this site. I'm going to come back here because I'm not going to show you all my login details, but you can just fill in $100,000 I earn. And then here you can see the average spend on a household uh, in the US. And then that can be a reference. I and, and some people have this. We'll be able to add and import Excel spreadsheets, connect your credit card, connect your Expensify, or their like uh, similar products. But yeah, that's that's sort of what we've been building out. And so that was the real criticism that we cannot see all the impact that actually true inflation has had over the last three years, not just the last 12 months. And then we're also going to change this to the last 12 months. What's the year low and year high? Uh, so there's small changes coming, but you can see that across the board, the real element that has really driven uh, cost is really uh, here you can see gasoline and other fuels and motor oil has just been pumping up um, and that's been compensated by everything coming down right so everything else has been coming down since last year right but it's been going up 10 percent last year um, so you add the 10% plus the 2%, 2.5% plus another 7% the year before that, you're looking at a total of 23, 24% decline in purchasing power over the last couple of months, right? This is resulting in interest rates because of interest rates going up. One of the things that we talked about was interest rates going up, right? And so the cost per household in terms of interest rates has gone up significantly. Um, what are people spending on? And if you go to the Trueflation Nation a while back, uh, we were talking about we were talking about um, what that number would look like. And there was a number that's coming out where U.S. households are now spending three point three trillion dollars in personal interest over the last seven months. That's because interest rates have gone up to five point five percent. Everybody's raised interest rates, right? New mortgages coming out are now at eight percent, as we talked about. Uh, not only new mortgages coming out are at eight percent, but then obviously you've got your credit card bills. How much are the credit card companies charging you? Credit credit card bills are growing significantly across households, etc. So it's now becoming a significant part of the household income. So this is a staggering increase, which will impact purchasing spend. Uh, we've embedded cost of interest into each of these items. So you don't see a standalone interest payment. But I think that's what we will be offering as well. Just to give you some feedback on what we heard over the last couple of weeks. 
um, associated with Truflation and the dashboard that we're offering. But ultimately, what is this resulting in, right? The huge increase in, in interest payments and in costs, um, right? Um, and, and still, the government is operating below budget. I mean, if you look, you know, so the increase is, is, is showing, uh, you can see here, uh, what does that mean? Wow, you know, we're seeing more and more bankruptcies coming because of the increase in interest payments. Um, people are struggling to make ends meet, uh, not only people, but all the small, medium businesses. And what does that mean? We're killing the small, medium businesses. We're not looking to promote more businesses. And the big economic drivers around the world are coming from small, medium businesses. We all see the big poster childs of big companies, big corporations, but it's actually not the big corporations that are really the, the motor and the engine of economies. It's actually the small, medium businesses. How do we further them? How do we help them uh, be more successful and mitigate this, right? All the meanwhile, again, you're seeing governments not being able to stay within their budgets, right? Budget deficit again and again and again. The only time we had budget surplus was when the economy was booming. We had the dot-com boom. We had the telco boom. We had all of these. And it was when interest rates were high, by the way. But look at the economy when the dot-com era, right? 96 to 2001, this economy was booming. Budget surplus. Regulation did not know about the internet. They did not know how to deal with the internet. We had a lot of exits. We had scams too, but we had a lot of exits. We had a lot of successes and the successes by far outweighed the scams and the opportunities were far greater. And that hope and that leap forward was what resulted into economic and budget surpluses at the governments. And so why do we not create that again? We have huge new technology boosts. We have AI, we have blockchain, which can innovate the whole new financial sector. AI that can streamline and improve productivity across the board, every single industry, Gentech, you know, all these new uh, areas uh, that we can flourish. And so I'm not gonna go into that too much, but yeah, just how do we hold our governments accountable? to staying on budget, I think that's what uh, I, I'm super uh, disappointed about. And then if you haven't seen it, I, I spend a lot of time on airplanes. So what do I do on airplanes? I generally download YouTube videos and watch these YouTube videos on these airplanes. And I learn, right? I use that time to always be learning. And one thing, there was a really good presentation that I implore you all to watch, which is Bill Gurley's presentation at the All In Summit um, 2,851 miles. I'll let him, you watch it. You tell me what you think about it, whether you like this, whether this is worthwhile, let me know in the comment section. But basically what he's saying is regulation actually consolidates industries and creates monopolies or oligopolies, right? Um, look at the telco. He does examples in the telco industry, in the COVID industry, during the COVID, in the medical industry, and another set of examples that he has there and makes total rational sense. And I really implore you all um, to watch that. You know, and you can see that happening, you know, here, just a simple example in what happened in Scotland, right? Nicola Sturgeon was the uh, Prime Minister of Scotland or President, I don't know what they call it, but they tried to freeze and ban landlords from evicting hundreds of thousands of tenants in the buy to let market, right? So a lot of people have bought property in and across Scotland in and then let it out as a secondary income right as you can see you know these measures were designed to protect renters against the soaring cost of living but the policy has precisely done the opposite effect driving landlords out of the market reducing housing supply and forcing up rents to record highs where they are today so rents are now super high and it's really hard to get real estate i just had bumped into somebody on the flight who was telling me about how difficult it is in Edinburgh to rent a property. Edinburgh is, is I think, the capital of Scotland. And how hard is it to get a place there? Uh, and super expensive, let alone hard to find, right? So again, it is, it is, it is beneficial to some and, 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 and unfortunate to others. So, um, yeah, what can we do about that, right? And, and and how can we fix that? And again, um, 
I will leave it at that. Um, thank you, everybody. Have a great day. Happy Monday. I'm back. You'll see these come back on a weekly, uh, on a daily basis. And happy Monday. Thanks, everybody.